All right, so in this video, I'm just gonna give you guys a few things to keep in mind for those who are going down to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And that's because this country, is, it's very interesting. I don't think many people know about what goes on inside of it. Most people, when they think of Brazil, they probably think of beaches, carnival, soccer, and women. Which makes sense because this country is somewhat, it's not necessarily isolated, but they speak a language different from the majority of countries on that continent. Some people don't realize that they speak Portuguese. Some people probably have never heard Portuguese before in their life. So like I said earlier, it's a very interesting country. I'm just going to share a few things to keep in mind so that when you plan your visit or when you go down to Rio, you're not caught off guard. So first things first, let's talk about the weather. Brazil is in the southern hemisphere. So their seasons are opposite of ours in the northern hemisphere. For example, when it's summer in the U.S., June, July, August, it's winter time in Brazil. Now, the majority of times that I visited Rio, it was during their summer months, you know, December to March. However, from what I understand from doing research is that Rio has a temperate climate all year round. Obviously, some months will be a little hotter, some months a little colder, but overall, you can visit any time of the year. So the main thing you want to keep in mind is what are you visiting for? For example, the summer months from December to March, a very popular time to visit. It's hot, so a great time to go to the beach. And also they have many festivities because they have some of the main celebrations during these months. They have the huge New Year's Eve party on the beach. They have the carnival and everything in between with parties and events, et cetera, et cetera. But also keep in mind that this is going to be one of the most expensive times to visit as well. If you're not interested in high heat, ton of people, inflated prices, parties everywhere, then visiting another time of the year may be best. Next up on the list is the plugs and the outlets. When preparing for travel, sometimes we kind of forget that other countries may, like we, we assume that other countries have the same outlets that we use in ours. We think we can show up to foreign land and just plug in whatever device we have with no problems, which is not always the case. The outlets that they have, I don't even know what it's called, but here's a picture of it. Okay, so if you're watching this from like the US, Canada, it's very different. Now, if you're staying at a reputable, at a name brand hotel that is used to accommodating international visitors, then most likely they may have the outlet from your country or continent available or an adapter. But if you're booking through a third party site, let's say booking.com, Airbnb, and you're staying in someone's apartment, someone's condominium, they may not have those things. So one, whenever you book an accommodation, make sure to ask the host if they have uh, different outlets. Or two, you can buy a universal travel adapter, which you can use in pretty much the majority of countries in the world. You can find these, I'm sure, at your local Walmart or on Amazon. You don't need anything fancy, just get the cheapest one. Moving along, another thing you need to be familiar with is the currency. In Brazil, their currency is called real, and then plural is reais. And exchange rates change every day, so it's always good to double check. But as the making of this video, it's five reais to one US dollar. And here goes what it looks like. So you have the two reais bill, then you have the five reais, which again, that's one dollar. Then you have the 10 reais, which is around two dollars. 20 reais, around four dollars. 50 reais, around ten dollars. And then the 100 reais, which is around $20. And I believe they have a 200 hay ice note, but I've never seen it before. But here are the bills you're going to see when you go to the ATM to pull out cash. You don't have to memorize the exchange rate for each note, but just understand that, okay, 100 hay ice is around 20 bucks. So if something costs 50, I just cut that in half. That's around $10. It's always good to make a mental note of that so you understand how much you're paying. In addition, they also have coins, but most of you guys don't care about that. You're interested in the, in the bills. So I'm not gonna touch on those. Another thing you need to know, when you touch down in Rio, you take your Uber or your taxi to your accommodation. Once you put down your bags, you go outside to the supermarket, you're walking around, you're in the malls, you're at the beach. You're going to realize that there's not necessarily a Brazilian look. Meaning whoever's watching this video, when you get the real, you look Brazilian. And that's because Brazil just overall has so many different ethnic groups and, and peoples that migrated there back in the day. So you just have this melting pot of just different looks and, and phenotypes. 
there have been plenty of times where I was walking, I seen a group of people coming, I'm like, oh, probably some tourists. They walk past me speaking Portuguese. And it happened a few times on the beach. I'm like, oh, it's probably some tourists. They're hanging out. And I hear them, they're speaking Portuguese. So that's when I realized, I said, let me, let me just stop. Everyone here is Brazilian until further notice, until I hear them speaking a language that is not Portuguese. This next thing to know is something that I really believe uh, differentiates this country from others. When you get to Rio, you're going to realize that the people there, and this might be all of Brazil, I don't know, but I know in Rio, I would say they love sugar. For example, one of their famous attractions, Pão de Açúcar. And I hope I said Pão correctly because I understand if you don't, that can mean something different. So hopefully I said it correctly, but Pão de Açúcar, which means Sugarloaf Mountain. Okay, Sugarloaf Mountain. Next up, their famous spirit. Cachaça is made out of sugarcane. Following that, their famous drink, their famous uh, cocktail, caprinha, is made with cachaça, which is from sugarcane, and then they add sugar to it. So it's somewhat of a, in my opinion, it's like a, a, a sugary mojito. It's very sweet, very refreshing, and, and very delicious. And last but not least, this is the one thing that Brazil does differently than the other countries nearby in South America, at least the ones that I've been to. This is a sin in other countries. This is forbidden. And that is while in Rio and maybe all of Brazil, but in Rio for sure, they drink their coffee with sugar. You are not gonna see that in many other countries in, in this area. In Colombia, they don't do that. Ecuador, they didn't do that. Peru, they didn't do that. When I was in uh, like Mexico, I don't believe they did that. Panama, they didn't do that. Brazil is unique in that fashion where their coffee, they have it sweet. So when you're in Rio, be careful if you're a diabetic, pre-diabetic, you know, you're on that borderline. Make sure you watch out what you're eating, what you're drinking, because chances are it has some sugar in it, even if you don't taste it. And last but not least, the last thing to keep in mind, or last thing to know, and this might be due to the time of year that I visited, which was again, the summertime, during the parties, et cetera, et cetera. I definitely think Brazil is considered a beer country. It reminded me a lot of Mexico, traveling around Mexico and walking around the cities at night, like a lot of people, I mean, they, they can throw some beers back. And it was no different when I was walking around Rio. Like at the bars, everyone hangs out outside. They put tables and chairs on the sidewalk and that's where people drink. And when I say they can drink, I mean not only the men, but the women as well. You're gonna see these tables just filled with bottles. I mean like two liter size bottles. Everyone drinks from the same bottle, but still just everyone's just throwing them back. So that's what I wanna point out. If you like beer, then you'll probably enjoy Brazil. However, um, I'm not a huge beer drinker, but I think their style is more like the light beer. If I'm not mistaken, let me know. But that's just what I heard. It's more on your lighter side. But whatever, that's beside the point. They, they can throw them back. Now, all that being said, these are just a few things to keep in mind for your trip to Brazil. A few things you should know. A few cultural things as well that I, that I observed when I was out there. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end it right here. If you're planning a trip to Rio, I hope this video has helped you. I hope you have found some value in it. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Deuces.